بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome everyone This is lecture 8 uh, of our lectures uh, in the grammatical rules and systems course uh, In this lecture we will discuss adjectives and adjective phrases So adjectives are words which we use to describe So they are words that give, give us uh, quality They are used to describe people Qualities that describe people, describe things, uh, describe events, uh, etc., and so on. So uh, they can be divided into two groups: attributive and predicative. Okay. So the first type is is uh, attributive adjectives, uh, which appear before the noun. Okay. So the uh, what is special about these adjectives is that they come before the noun as pre-modifiers. Okay, so in this sentence, this is an important lesson. Important is an adjective. Uh, of course, lesson uh, is a noun. Okay, and an important lesson is a noun phrase. It is a nominal group, if you remember. Important here comes before the noun, before the head, lesson. Okay, so important is called an attributive adjective. The second type is called predicative adjectives if you remember we talked a bit about the subject and the predicate we said simple sentences one clause sentences must have a subject and a predicate so predicative adjectives appear in the predicate they appear after the noun okay so they appear after the noun in the predicate in this example this lesson is important you notice we have the noun phrase this lesson okay lesson is the noun but the adjective important appeared after the noun and after the verb to be is okay so it appeared in the predicate so the subject in this sentence this lesson and the predicate is important this is the predicate and the adjective appeared in the predicate so we call it a predicative adjective uh, many adjectives can be used both attributively and predicatively so it's not necessary to be either this or that uh, some adjectives can appear both so in the case of important uh, in the previous two examples we saw that important can appear as an attributive adjective and it can appear as a predicative adjective okay but there are also some adjectives that can only appear or can only be used attributively so they can only be used before the noun okay they can't appear after the noun in the predicate uh, some of the examples of these uh, adjectives are main, principal, and chief. Okay, so these adjectives can only appear before the noun. So we say the main reason is this and that. Okay, or oh, this is the main reason. We can't say the reason is main, huh? and then we end the sentence. Uh, because these only appear attributively. So the, there is, it is not possible to make these appear after the noun in the predicate uh, like important in the previous example so those only appear attributively uh, there are also other adjectives that can only use, uh, be used predicatively so they are only used they can only be used as predicative adjective uh, adjectives like afraid asleep these are called predicative adjectives they only appear as predicative adjectives so we say the man is afraid my brother is asleep but we can't we can't say asleep the man is here for example okay or the asleep man is here uh, we can't say the important man is here but we can say the asleep or the afraid man is here so these adjectives can only appear in the predicate after the noun and as you notice uh, some of these adjectives have, have a before them like afraid, asleep uh, so this is uh, something that can help you remember these adjectives adjectives used only predicatively those that can only appear in the predicate after the noun tend to refer to a temporary condition so you know the difference between temporary and permanent so temporary is only for a short time permanent is lasting okay it lasts so Adjectives that are used predicatively most of the time refer to something temporary. So, uh, if, if we look at 
is these adjectives that are related to health in these examples uh, the old man is well today well is a predicative adjective and it refers to a temporary condition so the old man might have failing health okay he sometimes he might be sick sometimes he uh, might be healthy so when we say the old man is well today that means this is temporary so tomorrow he might get sick because you know he he is of old age and he is a frail man and he can uh, get sick uh, the next day example one well is a predicative adjective that shows a temporary condition now compare example one to the following example where we use healthy to refer to a permanent characteristic so he is a very healthy old man this is a permanent characteristic so this old man is healthy he rarely gets sick, uh, sick, sick so he uh, uh, is a healthy man uh, uh, we, so we can use this as a predicative or an attributive adjective so uh, he is a very healthy old man or we can say the old man is healthy so this adjective can be used uh, as a predicative adjective it can be used as an attributive adjective and it refers to a permanent characteristic an old man who is mostly healthy he really gets sick Okay. In a few cases, the meaning of the adjective will change according to its position. So, if it appears before the noun, it will have a different meaning than if it appears in the predicate after the noun. For example, Ahmed was late. Late in this uh, example may, means that he did not come on time. So, a person who is late, he did not come on time. This is a predicative adjective in this case. Late can also appear as a, an attributive adjective as in this example the late Ahmed Al Ali lived here so Ahmed is the noun the late Ahmed Al Ali uh, of course is a nominal group it is an MP late is an att attributive adjective it came before the noun and here it means that Ahmed Al Ali who is now dead okay so the late Ahmed Al Ali a person who is now dead okay so that the meaning changed when we moved late to use it attributively of course we can use late attributively to mean to mean the same uh, meaning uh, as Ahmed was late okay so uh, the late man finally arrived it can be used in the same meaning as the first example but if we want to say someone who is dead we can only use it attributively before the noun all right so the meaning changes according to position if you want to say someone did not come on time we can either use it predicatively or attributively but if we want to say someone who is dead we only use it attributively now let's look at this exercise decide whether the underlined adjective can be used only attributively only predicatively or both so, if it can only be used attributively, you choose A. If it can only be used predictively, you choose B. If it is possible to use it both uh, in, in the attributive and predicative position, we choose C. So, number one, he is a smart student. Smart, can we say the student is smart? Yes. So, smart can be used both attributively and predicatively so we can choose C both so smart the correct choice here is C number two the child is asleep the child is asleep you remember asleep is one of the special adjectives that can only appear in the predicate okay so we can not say the asleep child uh, is awake now the asleep child is uh, resting so asleep can only be used in the predicate so the correct choice is B 3 one of the main causes of lung cancer is smoking main comes before the noun here so main causes main causes causes the noun and main comes before it so here it is in the attributive position can we 
change it to make it in the predicative position? Uh, can we say, say uh, the cause is main of lung cancer? No, we can't. So main can only be used in the attributive position. So the correct choice is A. Number four, are you afraid of the dark? Be careful with this sentence. This is a question. So you might see uh, afraid here uh, and and say, okay, it, uh, it might be before the noun or after the noun because it is a question. It might come after the noun. So change it into a statement and see what the, the, the right position. So are you afraid of the dark? We can change it to, to mean you are afraid of the dark. So you are afraid, you notice, it comes in the predicate after are, after the verb. So this is a predicative adjective. Can we make it an attributive adjective? No, it is similar to sleep in number two. So afraid, afraid and asleep, as we said, they can only be uh, predicative. So the correct choice for number four is B. This runner is fast. We, we can say he is a fast runner. Okay, or the fast runner is here. So fast can either be used attributively or predicatively, so the answer is C, both. Now we will look at adjective phrases, as we looked previously at prepositional uh, noun phrases and other phrases like verb phrases, so we will discuss adjective phrases uh, briefly here. Uh, so first, adjective phrases are composed of an adjective uh, which functions as the head. So, in adjective phrases, the adjective is the head of the phrase. They also contain a modifier, and this modifier is mostly an adverb. So, mostly you'll see an adverb as a modifier. It comes before the head, before the adjective. And then you have a complement. So, we can have only the adjective in the adjective phrase, like in the first example in this table. Good. It is the only adjective, or the only word in this phrase. It is the head. Uh, and we call it an adjective phrase even though it is one word we said phrases refer to groups of words uh, or a group of words but we can use it as a way to simplify things instead of ha having two classifications we just say adjective phrases to include adjectives and other uh, adjectives or adjective phrases that contain more than one uh, word okay so good we can use it, uh, we, we can call it an adjective phrase to make things a bit simpler uh, when we describe uh, grammatical constituents and elements. Look at the second example, good at mathematics. At mathematics is a prepositional phrase and you remember it comes in this case as the complement of the adjective good, which is the head in this adjective phrase. Very good, here we have a modifier, it is an, uh, an adverb so very and good, good is the head, very good is an adjective phrase. Then we can have all three elements, very, which is the modifier, pre-modifier before the head, and then good, which is the adjective, and then at mathematics, a prepositional phrase that functions as a complement. So very good at mathematics, all this is an adjective phrase. Now we'll talk about another point here, uh, which is about gradable adjectives. So gradable adjectives are adjectives that express a condition or quality of which there are degrees. So we imagine these adjectives as having degrees. So 10%, 20%, 50%, 70%, and so on. So they can be gradable. They can be graded according to certain degrees. So if we look at the example good, this is an adjective and it is gradable. So there are degrees of goodness. So we can give an adjective a high degree. We say, this is very good. Okay, this is very good. Here we added the modifier very to give us a higher degree of goodness. So if we compare good with very good, very good is higher. Okay, so this is a higher degree than good. Number two, excessive degree. Excessive means something you didn't expect, you didn't anticipate, more than you thought would be the case. So when you say too good, this is too good to be true. Too good to be true. You, you can't believe how good this thing is because it is more than you expected, more than you anticipated. You didn't expect something to be this good. Okay? So too good. Too good. 
when you say the exam is difficult, okay, we can say the exam is very difficult to make it a higher degree. So very difficult. It is higher than uh, usually usual difficulty. And when you say it is too difficult, it means it is impossible for you to solve. Okay, it is impossible for someone to solve or do and get a good grade in. So too difficult. This is means this means excessive. So an excessive degree. Then we have sufficient and insufficient. That means enough or not enough of something of an of, of a certain quality. So in our example, good. There is good enough, which is enough of the quality to uh, to to satisfy you, or not good enough, not enough of the quality to satisfy a certain measure or, or a certain standard. So good enough or not good enough. Then we have comparative and superlative. And you might have uh, studied these before in previous courses. So we have the comparative form of adjectives to compare two things. So for in the case of good, we say better. This is a comparative form. Or in the case of smart, we say smarter. Or in the case of beautiful, we say more beautiful. In the superlative, in the case of good, we say best. In the case of smart, we say smartest. And in the case of beautiful, we say most beautiful. You will notice that certain adjectives might have a separate form in the comparative and superlative. So, in the case of good, there is a different form for the comparative, which is better, and a different form for the superlative, which is best. Most adjectives will take ER, so smarter, smart here can take ER in the comparative, or EST in the superlative, so we say smartest. Yet another group of adjectives will only take more or most. So more beautiful and most beautiful. We can't say beautifuler, okay, it is even hard to pr pronounce. Uh, or beautifulest, okay, so this is not possible. We only say more beautiful or most beautiful. Some adjectives like complete are not gradable. So we said there are gradable adjectives, they have degrees. Adjectives like complete, they are not gradable because when something is complete, it is done. This is it, it is complete. Or when something, for example, is perfect, perfect is an adjective, so it is, uh, it, there is no grade imperfect okay so it is perfect that's it so we can't grade perfect we can't grade complete if something is complete it is complete and that's it so they are not normally okay there are of course exceptions to everything so normally they are not compa compared uh, so we don't say more and uh, most complete and things like that and we don't modify them by very too or enough uh, we have another point here which is related to adjectives referring to shape or size. So adjectives related to shape, like round and tall, these describe shape, or size, big, small, narrow, wide, these describe the size of a certain thing. These can only modify count nouns. You remember we studied count nouns, and we said there's a, there's a difference between count nouns and mass nouns, these adjectives that refer to shape or size can only modify count nouns. So they cannot modify mass nouns. Look at the example. This is a big building. Big refers to size. Building is a count noun. We can say one building. We can say two buildings. So big is possible to come with building. But it is incorrect to say this is big water. If we are referring to a mass of water, a big mass of water, you can't say this is big water, okay, because water is a mass noun. You can't use the adjective big with mass nouns because it refers to size. And other ad adjectives that refer to shape are the same as well. Now we will talk about the function of adjective phrases. So the first function, if you remember that we talked a bit about the function of prepositional phrases and noun phrases, and this is helpful, of course, for you to understand those first and then uh, come and look at this. So you know the meaning of complement. We mentioned it a few times now. So complement is something that completes the meaning of a sentence. It is necessary to the complete meaning of the sentence. We can't remove it. So the first function of the adjective uh, phrase is the complement of the subject plus the verb to be 
Of course, you know the verb to be by now is am, are, was, and where. And here it is uh, in the position or it, or it functions as the main verb of the sentence. So Ahmed is very intelligent, is, this is the verb to be, the form of the verb to be, third person singular form in the present. And it is the only verb, it is the main verb in this sentence. And we have the subject Ahmed, so subject plus B. Then we have the adjective phrase very intelligent. In this case, we can't remove very intelligent. It is necessary for the completeness of the meaning. We can't say Ahmed is and finish the sentence. We must say Ahmed is very intelligent. Okay. Uh, number two, complement of direct object. So the complement is necessary for the complete meaning of the direct object, as in the example, he found Ahmed. Here it means he believes, he thinks that Ahmed is very intelligent. So he found Ahmed very intelligent. We can't say he found Ahmed because this will change the meaning. That means Ahmed was lost and someone found Ahmed. This is not the meaning we want in this sentence. So if you want to say that someone thinks of Ahmed as very intelligent, someone believes that Ahmed is very intelligent, we need a complement to, to have or convey this meaning. So he found Ahmed very intelligent. This is a complement. Very intelligent is a complement. It is an adjective phrase. We can restate this sentence as he found Ahmed to be very intelligent. All right. So in this case, this is the complement of the direct object. Then adjectives can be pre-modifiers in a noun phrase. So, for example, my friend, my, my very good friend is coming to visit me. Here in this example, we have very good, which is an adjective phrase, and my very good friend, this is a noun phrase. So the adjective phrase is in, is within, or it is embedded within the noun phrase. Okay, so my very good friend, very good modifies the noun friend, so it is a pre-modifier. It comes before the noun friend and modifies, mo modifies it, and it is in the noun phrase. So my very good friend, very good is a pre-modifier. If you want to differentiate between pre-modifiers and complements, we can take away all the phrase, including the adjective, in the case of pre-modifiers, and replace it with another pronoun. So my very good friend, we can take all this away and say he, okay? So my very good friend, we can say he is coming. My very good friend is coming, we say he is coming. You notice very good went away with the whole noun phrase. So it is part of the noun phrase. And it is part of the noun phrase, that means it is a modifier, okay? It is a modifier of the noun, it modifies the head friend. So this is how you differentiate between modifiers and complements in case you find this difficult. Then we have the, the, this next function, function which is the post modifier. So we, it can function as a pre modifier or a post modifier in a noun phrase. For example, we must find the person responsible for the robbery. The person responsible for the robbery, all this is the noun phrase. Responsible is an adjective, and it came after the head. So the head is person. The sentence says, we must find the person. So we added more modifiers to this head. We say, uh, the person responsible. So he is responsible for something. And in this case, as we said, we can take away all of this and replace it with a pronoun. So we can say, we must find him. Instead of the person responsible for the robbery, we can say, we must find him. And responsible was taken away with the noun phrase. That means it is part of the noun phrase. It modifies the head person. Okay? Number five, head of a nominal group. This is a special case. We studied nominal groups before and noun phrases. And we said, usually, the head in a nominal group is a noun. So nominal groups will have... Uh, the noun as a head normally. But there are special cases where, where an adjective can be the head of the nominal group uh, and we will uh, tell you each case here. So the first case that uh, it can appear as the head with a number 
of adjectives that refer to a class of people. So, a class of people that have a certain characteristic. In this case, it can ab appear as the head of a nominal group. We'll see some examples. First, uh, the adjectives that refer to a class of people include blind. So, when we say the blind, we are referring to the people who share the characteristic of, of blindness. Okay, Homeless, the people who share the characteristics uh, or the characteristic of being homeless. Poor, the people, the class of people that share the characteristic of being poor, and so on. So the blind, the homeless, the poor, we can use those as the head of an, uh, a nominal group in the following examples, you will notice how we use them here. So, we gave money to the poor. The poor is a noun phrase. It is a nominal group and the head is an adjective, poor. So, poor here means the class of people who are poor. The wealthy. The wealthy, you notice, is the subject in the sentence. It is a noun phrase. As we said, the subject is a noun phrase. And wealthy is an adjective. It is the head of the noun phrase. There is no noun here. We only have a determiner, the, and wealthy, which is, which is an adjective. The wealthy is a noun phrase in this case. So, the wealthy must help poor people in our society. Wealthy means the class of people who are wealthy. Then, we have another example. The young are our hope for the future. The young means the class of people who are young. Here, this is a noun phrase. It is a nominal group. It has the adjective young. Young is the head of this nominal group in this special case. The second special case is adjectives that refer to abstract ideas. So, abstract means something we can't see or touch. Okay, ideas. Things that we don't see, we can't touch, we can't uh, observe with our senses. So, we call these abstract. They are only in our mind. For example, unexpected. We can't touch unexpected. We can't see the unexpected. Okay, It is an abstract idea in our mind. Unknown. We don't see the unknown. We just have you know, an idea about the meaning of this uh, adjective. So, unknown or unexpected. Those can appear as the head of a nominal group in a noun phrase. So, for example, the unexpected happened. The unexpected is the subject. Here it is in the noun phrase, the unexpected, it is the head, and it, it is preceded by a determiner, the. So, uh, this is an abstract idea used as the head of a nominal group, and it is an adjective. Also, the unknown is frightening, unknown is the same uh, as well. It is the head of the noun phrase, of the pronominal group, or, or sorry, of, of the nominal group, the unknown. Okay? Then we have the next case. Adjectives that refer, uh, you correct, correct these, adjectives, okay? Uh, adjectives that refer to the people of a country. Adjectives that refer to the people of a country. So when we say the English, the English refers to the people of England, okay? So this is a subject, it is a nominal group, and the adjective is the head of the nominal group, the English, refers to the people of England, or the population of England. The French are very interested in fashion. The French refers to the people of France. Let's look at this exercise. Identify the function of each of the underlined adjective phrase below. So, it is either a complement, a modifier in a noun phrase, or the head of a noun phrase. Number one, the driver responsible for the accident paid the fine. The driver responsible for the accident paid the fine. Where is the subject in this sentence? It is all these words, one, two, three, four, five words, the driver responsible for the accident. So it's six words here. So the driver responsible uh, for the accident, the, this is all one noun phrase. And the adjective is part of the noun phrase. Okay? So, driver responsible is a modifier. It is a post modifier. It comes after the head driver. So, the answer for number one is B. Uh, number two, the driver was careless. 
The driver was careless. We have the subject and we have the verb to be. And then we have careless. We can't say the driver was and end the sentence. So careless is necessary for the completion of the meaning. Careless is a complement. Number two is a complement. The correct choice is A for number two. Number three, he is a careless driver. He is a careless driver. A careless driver, we can take it away and we can put a pronoun instead of it. We can say he is this or he is that. Okay? So a careless driver is part or all part of a one noun phrase. So careless is part of the noun phrase, a careless driver, and it modifies driver. It gives more information about driver, someone who is careless. So driver uh, is modified by careless. It is the head, of course, driver here, and careless is a pre-modifier. So three, the correct choice is B, modifier. In number four, the police found the driver guilty. The police found the driver guilty. Okay, so here we need guilty to complete the meaning. It is a complement of the uh, object driver. So the police subject, then we have the verb found, and then the driver object. But we can't say the police found the driver. It means that if we say the police found the driver, this will change the meaning. It will mean that the driver was lost, and the police were looking for him, for him until they found him. But in this case, the police found the driver guilty. That means they proved that he is guilty. Okay? They found and they think that the driver is guilty of causing an accident, for example. So the police found the driver guilty. Guilty is necessary for the completion of the meaning. So it is a complement. In number four, guilty is a complement. The correct choice is A. The elderly must be respected. The elderly must be respected. So here, the elderly is the subject, and we have elderly, which is an adjective, and it is one of the special cases that we mentioned, an adjective that can function as the head of a nominal group, and elderly refers to the class of people who are old. So the elderly here is the head of the noun phrase. Elderly is the head of the noun phrase. So the correct choice for number five is C. Okay, so this is the end of this lecture. Inshallah, I will uh, see you in the next lecture. We will continue our discussion of phrases. We will discuss uh, adverb phrases in the lex uh, next lecture. Uh, and we will talk a little bit about uh, these phrases as we did with adjective phrases today. So thank you for listening. I will see you next time.